It's classified beyond the normal briefing for the president. The president of the United States and the director of the CIA were being denied access. We actually are living in a, a situation where the extreme secrecy Eisenhower warned us about, the worst of that has come to fruition. And frankly, no one is reporting that, certainly not the mainstream me news media. There are sociopaths who are in super secret projects that don't want us to have it. I'm working now to try to bring this information and more equally importantly, the technologies that are behind these uh, spacecraft and, and things that are being reported on CNN now, because what the public isn't being told is that we have in fact figured out how those objects operate. And that would give us an entirely new and advanced civilization where we would not need fossil fuels, oil or gas or coal or nuclear power. So it's a very big story. Most people think the secrecy around this is because the government has just been incompetent. That's not true. That narrative is a false narrative. The true narrative is that, uh, I will quote from a top secret memo released uh, during uh, the past few decades, but it was dated 1951. And it stated that the subject was the most classified matter in the U.S. government exceeding the classification of the development of the hydrogen bomb, I'm quoting. So a lot of people think this is about aliens. I said, no, it's not about ETs. It's about humans and how are humans going to get out of the conundrum we're in, which is a very serious problem, and move forward as a civilization instead of sliding backwards. The public thinks that, you know, God is in heaven and everything is in orbit and everything is, uh, we actually are, are living in a, a situation where the extreme secrecy Eisenhower warned us about, the worst of that has come to fruition. And frankly, no one is reporting that, certainly not the mainstream me news media. This is not just the United States, by the way, the same situation exists in Great Britain, Australia. I've, I've met with ministers of defense in, in most of the five eyes countries, which are of course, you know, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, Great Britain, US. I think this is the part of, of the story that people have a hard time, in a sense, getting their minds around because we all grew up with our history lessons and our uh, civics lessons and the president is the commander in chief and blah, blah, blah. In reality, the emperor has no clothes and uh, there are classified projects that go on, unfortunately, that are not supervised by the president or the Congress. And actually the CIA director's wife, who at the time was the chief operating officer of the National Academy of Sciences, said uh, to, to me during our two or three hour meeting uh, with the CIA director, she turned to me, she said, how are these civilizations communicating across the vastness of interstellar space? because the speed of light is too slow. And, and for people who aren't scientists on your viewership, let me explain. At the speed of light, to go 1% of the way across our own galaxy, the Milky Way, would take, it, which is a thousand light years, which is the distance light goes at 186,000 miles every second for a year. That's one light year. A thousand light years is 1% of the way across our galaxy which is one galaxy amongst trillions. But at the speed of light for you to even communicate and say, hey, how are you doing? And to answer back, that would be the time since the birth of Christ, 2000 years for that transmission to happen with what you and I are using right now on electromagnetic signals. So we knew as scientists uh, and, and that there had to be something else that these civilizations were using. And what we discovered was that they have very, high, very sophisticated electronics. And this is, of course, what Elon Musk at uh, Neur Neuralink, he has a company called Neuralink, is, is working on, that interface with directed thought. Now, this is probably where I've lost half your audience. And they're going, what? What we had discovered is that, in fact, these civilizations that are from various star systems have technologies that Elon Musk could only dream about. In other words, they very accurately transmit and send and receive directed quanta of thought instead of an electromagnetic signal per se through 
what's called field consciousness and conscious the consciousness field is i mean it sounds very buddhist or vedic but the consciousness field is actually not bound by space time space or time and because of that there's no limit on the speed of it it's instantaneous because of what's called non-locality in physics is a bit obtuse and, and technical to get into probably here but what non-locality means is that it's not based in the speed the linear speed of light or the lit, linear speed of sound or what have you it's instantaneous because of the nature of conscious field the field of consciousness this is the to me the most interesting stuff uh, because this whole science of consciousness is actually the big science for the next 1000 years but we have to catch up to the last 70 to 100 years of energy to, and propulsion technologies that have been hidden away so we don't destroy the biosphere why are we still using jet engines from the 30s 40s 50s or rockets from the 40s I'm saying because the alternative would completely terminate the petrodollar system and oil and gas and coal and nuclear power and public utilities. All of it is redundant, completely unnecessary. Tesla uh, actually had a prototype car that was pulling energy out of the uh, environment. Uh, and he didn't really understand what that was. Uh, we do now it's called zero point energy or quantum vacuum energy uh, but basically just for people who are non-scientific if you if visualize a coffee cup the amount of space inside that cup has enough energy to boil off all the oceans of the planet in its potential and it's called the zero point energy field it's been quantified it was in academic papers in the 50s so-called professor casimir casimir effect but Tesla stumbled, stumbled across this back way back, early 20s, I believe, maybe before. But JP Morgan said, look, if we can't put a meter on it, we don't want it. So Tesla died a very bitter man. I always joke that Elon Musk doesn't have a Tesla that he's manufacturing. He has a Musk. And the reason I say that sort of jokingly is that a true Tesla would never have to be plugged into the grid. It would be pulling energy out of this energy, this state of energy that's around us through very high voltage systems. They're called VHV, very high voltage systems that create a, a, an opening into that energy field. And Tesla did enough experimentation with these sort of very high voltage systems at certain uh, resonant frequencies, cycles per second, hertz, that he broke that he broke into that area of science, but no one wanted it to come out. Now, you know, fast forward a hundred years later, we're still burning gasoline in engines and rocket fuel and jets. And that's a tragedy for the human race, but it's a tragedy for the planet. And it's a tragedy for our children and my uh, nine grandchildren. So my concern is, you know, the future. Uh, the past is the past, but we have to figure out how to catch up and sort of back to the future. We, you know, <laughs> it's like the, that cartoon show, The Jetsons, when they showed people flying around in these cars, when that cartoon was made, those technologies were already developed. They're not going to say, A, we know what these are. B, we know where they come from. C, we figured out how they work. Let me give you a date that's going to probably curl your toes. October 1954. That was the date we mastered gravity control. Now, what do I mean by gravity control? What I mean by gravity control are high voltage systems that cause an object to what looks like levitate or move the way that vehicle that you saw in that video released by the Pentagon this week. And they confirmed, yes, this is real footage. And they released three different videos. What they didn't say, because the people releasing it don't know this because of the compartmentalization, is that there is an unacknowledged compartmented program that began studying this in the 40s and 50s and by 1954 had figured out how those things operate. 